So this is a little embarrassing. All right, guys, so I hope you're staying safe out there with this coronavirus going around. I hope you're following the advice of medical professionals and doing stuff like washing your hands. Um, you don't need to hear it from me. You've heard it from everybody. I just hope you're all staying safe and healthy out there. So here in California, we're under orders to stay at home whenever possible. So I've been home a lot the past few days. So I've really been catching up on a lot of projects that I've been postponing or procrastinating over the past, I don't know, year or so. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys are in the same type of situation. But what's really embarrassing is the fact that a, I have kind of devolved into wearing my PJs all day and my sports bra, which is what I'm currently filming in is my PJs. So it's kind of an epic kind of moment, I feel like. I feel like this is okay. Is this okay? I feel like it's okay. Anyway, so um, that's the first thing that's embarrassing. The second thing that's embarrassing, which is what I was kind of actually talking about a moment ago, is that Last year for my birthday, I got a Hairball Audio compressor kit. And so my birthday is actually in April. So it's been almost a whole year since I bought this thing. And I still have yet to build it because I've just been so busy with work. It's been like, go, go, go. And I just, it's too easy to procrastinate stuff. And so I have not built it yet. I have it here under my desk and I have not built it yet. So what I figured we could do today is actually build the thing. So I am gonna film this process for you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys find it interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below, as always. But I'm gonna film this process. It's a pretty simple thing to build. Um, I am told that you can build it without a bunch of expertise. So the electronics technician uh, program that I just completed over the past year is a little bit overkill for this type of thing. So hopefully any of you guys could also build this if you wanted to. It doesn't require a ton of tools to build. And um, from what I hear, it should be a pretty simple process. So I'm gonna find out, I'm gonna actually open this thing and actually finally build it. So without any more chit chat, let's cut to the building process. All right, so these are the tools that I'm gonna be using. So I have my DMM, my uh, multimeter, my digital multimeter. Um, so I'm gonna use this to measure components as I go, stuff like that. I have my soldering iron, which was actually a gift from a friend years ago when they were moving. Um, they figured I would end up using this for audio stuff and they were right. So um, thank you, Lorraine. This one, I probably wouldn't get one with the gun grip if I were to get one new now, but it's gonna work great for this project. So I'm keeping it and I'm using it. And then I also have my solder. And I'm gonna put links in the description to all these things. Uh, I'll have to put something comparable for the soldering iron because this is so old. Um, but I will put links in the description for you guys. And then I have this, which is actually here to clean the tip of the soldering iron. So the way you use it is you just do that and it'll help clean the extra solder off the tip of the soldering iron. So it just helps uh, keep that from accumulating at the tip and it helps you do more precision work. And then I don't have a holder for my soldering iron, so I just made this out of a metal hanger. So I just kind of twisted that up, and that's what I'm using to hold my uh, soldering iron. I'm gonna be very careful with it. It's very precarious. Um, I do not recommend doing this. Uh, just get an actual thing to hold your soldering iron. That's what I will be doing very soon. But these are the tools you need. These are the tools I'm gonna be using. Um, let's look at the kit. All right, so this is what the kit comes with. I'm just gonna open these up. So this looks like it's part of the housing for the compressor. This is the front plate here. And then this is gonna be all the exciting stuff here. So this is what we're gonna be building on. And all the different components. Cool, so I'm gonna unpack this. Switch over to time lapse. And we'll watch this build happen. And I'll stop periodically and talk about what I'm doing with each uh, important or unique step here.
All right, so first I'm going to build the power supply. So I'm gonna start with this uh, voltage selector uh, PCB. So this is what we're starting with. So this is hot. So what I've done so far, I've lined the switch up properly here to each of the points where it's supposed to go in here. And then I've trimmed this. And so that's to help avoid interference. And then also when you're soldering, if you have less surface area, then it's faster to heat up the element so that you can get the solder onto it. So I'm just gonna solder this onto here. I'm just gonna hold the soldering iron here to each pin and it's gonna heat up that element, and then I just drop the solder onto it. I like to blow on it a little bit as I go so it doesn't um, fume in my face. I have a good amount of lead on the solder here because it disappears pretty quick. So that is now soldered on. So I need to find CN13 and CN14. CN13 goes right here. And then CN14 goes right there. So now I'm gonna solder these. And once this is done, then I've completed this voltage select assembly. I'm doing the outer pins first to hold it in. All right, so that's that. And as I solder, you know, I was pushing down on these elements here so that we had a tight connection here once they were soldered in. And then I did the outer ones first, and then I filled in the middle ones so that this element would then be attached as I was filling these in and I didn't have to push in as hard for the rest of them. So that's basically that. You wanna make sure you have solder all the way around the connection point, that you don't have overlapping solder. That's basically that. I don't know if this is focusing well. That's that. And since I'm in the US, I am now gonna flip this over to 115. All right, so now I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to build the meter switch. So I'm gonna find those parts. bend these over here. So I bend them over like that. Okay, and so I want these flush against the board. So I push them all the way in. I'm gonna bend these ever so slightly. ever so slightly. And then I'm gonna push down here as I solder this. Okay, and I'm also blowing on this because this solder is actually a uh, leaded solder, which isn't the best for you.
looking at the silk screen here, so the line corresponds with this little clip release. I'm going to trim these pins to make it safe to install the meter switch. Okay, and this one dissipates a lot of heat, so we're going to mount it with a little bit of room here.
So this is a Zener diode. I have my capacitors and then my resistor. And I have the gap here for this resistor because it tends to produce a lot of heat. Okay, so now I just have to assemble the whole power supply and then I can test it and then on to the other stuff.
the stripe is on my right here. the silk screen. All right, so I finished building the power supply here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna test it here in a second, and then I can continue to build the rest of it. So first of all, I wanna make sure that this is off. So I wanna make sure this off button is indented before I start any of this. And then I also wanna make sure that I have it set to the correct type of power for my country. So I have already flipped that to 115 volts instead of, I think it was 220 is the one that's uh, the rest of the world. So just make sure that if you're doing this, that you check that. I don't know if I have to mention this, but this isn't like a comprehensive how-to. I'll put uh, links in the description to the instructions that I'm using here, um, just so you guys can see that if you need to. Um, don't rely on just me, please. Ooh, my knees cracked. All right, so I'm gonna plug this in. And this is off, so that's good. Being very aware, listening for any issues. Um, so I have this on ohms. I'm gonna change the range here to just plain old ohms. I'm gonna ground this, and I'm gonna check my ground. So I shouldn't see anything more than an ohm. So 0 0.2, 0 0.3, that's fine. That's just the resistance of my actual um, meter kicking in. And I'm bad at holding things still. It's a little scary, let's see. Point 0.3, point 0.2, point 0.1, that's good. Okay, so I've checked my ground. That's one of the most important things to check, right? So I'm gonna set this to read, let's see, voltage but I'm gonna do DC voltage here. I think I want it to set the range just to volts, not millivolts. Okay, so the thing about capacitors is if they fail, if something's wired wrong in here, they can explode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on by switching to gain reduction here instead of off. And I'm going to kind of step back and watch for a second here. Um, and I don't want to get injured, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make sure there's no smoke and hopefully everything will be fine. I'm going to turn this on. Ooh, I'm nervous. <gasps> nervous. I don't smell anything. I don't hear anything. AJ is laughing at me. Okay, it's kind of scary. I think it's okay. All right, so it's on, it's plugged in. Nothing's exploding, that's good. I'm gonna check this um, Zener diode here, and it should be 30 volts DC here, plus or minus five. So I'm gonna ground this. And then I'm going to go near my capacitors, which kind of scare me. Overload, what's my range? Try. Ooh, it's reading properly, 31. That's good. Okay, so it's within that range, right? So 30 plus or minus five volts. So that's a good sign. Okay, nothing's blowing up, I'm happy. Um, and now I'm gonna wanna measure CR9, and it should be negative 10 volts. That's how it's labeled, let's see. Yeah, so it should be negative 10 volts plus or minus five. So let me do that. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna put my probe, I'm gonna ground, and I'm gonna put my probe on the anode. Let's see, where is CR? I believe that's at CR9, right there. And it's 9.57, 9.6. That's good, that's within range, negative 9.65-ish. That's good, okay, and that's it. It's working, so I believe 
I have a working power supply. I'm gonna take a break for the evening and then tomorrow I'm going to see about building the rest of this junk. Woo, hopefully I don't mess up the rest of it and hopefully I keep having good luck here. Okay, bye. All right guys, so today's a new day. Yesterday we built the power supply and then tested it out. And so now what we're gonna start with is populating the actual uh, board here with all the components. So I have my list here of all my components. I have grabbed a highlighter to highlight the components as I put them in. And basically I'm just gonna place them in their proper place on the board and then I'm going to highlight them to show that I've placed them, solder them in, trim the excess um, wire. And that's basically it. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna disassemble this so I can get just the board here. But anyway, that's what we're gonna do. So I don't need this right here necessarily. I'm gonna push that to the side a little bit. I will test the components as I go. And then another thing that I do, um, this is heating up right now. Another thing that I do is I'm gonna place the smaller components first, the smaller components that are closer to the board, and then I'm going to place the larger components. So you might notice that pattern. That's a good way to do things. That's how I've been taught to do things. And I think that's all I was gonna say. Oh, one other thing is I, Let's see, I ordered some pliers online because I had some trouble with trimming different components yesterday. Um, I do have my Leatherman and some shears, but what I wanna do is use the proper tools. So I ordered some pliers. So that would be a good thing to get if you're doing this kind of project at home. Another thing um, is the soldering iron. I wish this tip was a little bit thinner a little bit more precise. You get one that has different tips so you can change those out. Um, I think I just have this one tip for this one. It does look like it might be able to get swapped out though because it has the screw here. So maybe I can look into that. But that's just a thought about um, what I would change right now if I had the resources and I don't know, if I had the time, if I can go to the hardware store. But here I am at home using my at home tools instead of at the shop. I think that's basically it. I'm just gonna get started here and start working. I'm looking really closely here to see the numbers printed on the diode. So this one says H33E7. This one says the same thing, H33, 3, and then E7, it's the same thing. So you can actually look on the diodes to see what's printed there. And let's see, so since these um, diodes are actually polarized, so there's an anode and a cathode side, so you do have to worry about the orientation of diodes. Diodes, capacitors, stuff like that. So I'm lining up the line on the diode to the line on the silk screen. Yeah, perfect. Next, I'm going to do 
to the resistors. Done. It's time to do the resistors. So we have a lot of resistors. So if you look at this sheet, this whole area here is all resistors. They're a bunch of different values. Um, and it's important not to mix them up, right? To mess them up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my values here on my multimeter. So I'm gonna set this to read ohms, which is resistance, right? And I'm gonna measure each of these resistors as I put them in, and I'm gonna confirm their value on the sheet, and then also in my schematic, which I have up on my computer. Um, I think that's basically it. The only other thing is with resistors, um, unlike with the diodes, they, the orientation doesn't matter, so I can put them either way, and it's gonna be fine. So, there's that. Oh, I can show you guys one thing that's kinda cool, if I can find my phone before I start doing this. But if you look at resistors, they have little bands on them. So let me grab some resistors here. So, for example, these guys, they have different color bands on them. And the color bands are a system that tells you the actual value of the resistor, so how many ohms of resistance the resistor has. And so you can do the math to get this, but um, you can do the math to figure out what the value is. Uh, and that's something they had us do in school. But let me see here, I actually have an app here. I forget what it was called. I had it, I used it a lot when I was in this class, the electronics technician class. And now I completely forget what it's called, which is something I do all the time with my apps because I am a forgetful person. Oh, it's called Resistor, what a surprise. So that's the app, it's called Resistor. And what you do basically is you go, okay, so this one has red, green. And sometimes what you can do is, if it's hard to see the colors, you can take a photo and then um, zoom in and that sometimes makes the colors more obvious. But basically what you do is you pick up a resistor and you go, let's say it's, um, it's red, orange, yellow, and then red. That'll tell you that it's a 230 kilo ohms resistor. That's kind of big. But the um, point is you just tap in the colors on the bands here, and this app will tell you what the value is for that resistor. Um, so this is a pretty handy app if you're working with resistors a lot. Uh, you can also just learn how to do the math for it. It's not as fast, obviously, um, but that's my story. All right, so I'm gonna start building this.
You might notice on these, I'm starting to get more comfortable with holding this tip a little bit past the actual wire. And that's because what I've found with the, you know, few soldering irons that I've used is that the tip tends to be a little bit colder than the rest of it. So sometimes, especially since this tip's kind of dull, it's not as pointy as I would like it. I'm finding it's easier to just heat up the element using the hottest part quickly and then put the solder to the that element here. Just makes it a little bit cleaner when I don't actually touch the soldering iron to the solder. I'm kind of still trying to learn how to make this cleanly. How to do this cleanly. And you know, just as I say that, I start going back to the other way of doing things because it seems faster. So I don't know, what do you guys think?
All right, so I've sorted these based on how much resistance they have. I've labeled them. Uh, I've tested them all as well. And so now I'm just going to place these on my board according to the schematic and then also checking this list here that has their sizes and then their locations. So um, I'm gonna be highlighting this as I go and doing my usual soldering. I just thought I'd say a couple of things. So it seems like I'm really liking this tape system. It helps hold the resistors in place and keep them organized for me. Um, I am double checking the values of the resistors on my multimeter. But um, other than that, I think the only other thing that I'm kind of finding helpful is when I go to actually solder these in, I'm taking the tip of the solder soldering iron and I'm putting it right up against the junction here between the, the resistor wire and the hole. And then I'm sliding it up that wire ever so slightly so that when I then touch the solder down, it's gonna be hotter faster and melt faster because I just touched the junction point, but then also the soldering iron isn't like over that spot directly. So it doesn't then cause a little like whipped cream peak in my solder. 
So um, this is probably super obvious to those of you that have more experience soldering than I have, but you know, I'm coming from the perspective of an audio engineer and just now getting into this stuff. So um, for someone like me, I would find that useful. So I figured I'd say that. Uh, other than that, I think that's about it. I'm gonna get started on this next bag of resistors.
All right, guys, so I'm back. I'm gonna do the transistors next. Um, sorry about any background noise. I'm doing laundry. It's, uh, I don't know, quarantine chaos. Uh, I don't really have an excuse, I'm sorry, guys. But anyway, sorry about the background noise. So transistors, so I'm doing transistors next. Um, they are a little more sensitive to temperature fluctuations, uh, temp temperature changes, so at least a little more sensitive than resistors. Um, so I'm gonna be a little more careful not to hold the solder to these components for as long. Um, I don't wanna accidentally break anything. I don't know how likely that is, but I know it's a little more likely. Um, let's see, what else about these? So these are directional, so unlike the resistors, I can't put them any which way. So what I'm gonna do for each of these is, if you look at them, most of them are this little uh, half circle shape. So basically, if you look at the actual silk screen here, you can see that we have those shapes on the silk screen. So I'm just gonna follow the silk screen for how to place each one. I'm gonna look at the model number, which is usually printed in tiny little letters on these things. Um, I think it's technically the model number, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I'm gonna look for that, and then I'm going to match that to find out on my schematics where each one goes. Um, so I will be consulting my schematics as I go. So most of these are gonna be bipolar junction transistors. So um, basically, each of these has three pins, and so it's C, B, E, so common, base, and emitter, um, if I'm remembering that correctly. So um, that's why each of these have three pins instead of like the two, for example, that we have with our resistors. And there is a matched pair in here. I think it might be the one that's taped here together. So I'm gonna keep that matched pair together. Those two are gonna go flush against each other um, at some point. I'm not sure, I saw in the schematic, but I forget where it was. Anyway, um, I think that's it about these. So I'm going to get started.
Now I'm gonna do the trim pots. So these are basically variable resistors. I only have four of them, so this part should go pretty quick. Um, so each of these have three pins. And if you look at the silk screen, the spots for them have more than three holes. And that's basically so you can swap these out with um, whatever type you want, if you want to swap them out. Uh, but I'm gonna use the ones that are included in the kit and I'm just gonna install them. When you look at the actual trim pots, you can see that we have these notches here. So those are gonna line up with the notches on the silk screen. So it's pretty easy. Um, I have three of one type and then one of the other. So I'm gonna look at the numbers on, I think it's on the side for these. The numbers on the side to see what the values are here. And then I don't know if you can see that but that's how I'm gonna figure out which ones to put where. And I guess that's it, I'm gonna do this now. Now it's time to do my capacitors. So I'm gonna do these, um, the film and the ceramic capacitors first. And that's cause these are not polarized. So just like with resistors, it doesn't matter which way I put them in. So I'm gonna do these first. Um, there are numbers printed on them and that's how I'm gonna figure out which ones are which and then where to place them. Um, so I'm gonna get started with that. Ooh, my pliers are here. Never mind. I'm going to open my pliers and then I don't have to use my shears anymore and then I'm going to get started. I got this so that I wouldn't have to use my kitchen shears anymore to cut the ends of the, the wires. So I'm going to use this and I guess I'll put a link in the description to this, this little kit. So capacitors, let's get started.
right, so now I'm gonna do the ceramic capacitors. And it's kind of the same deal as the film capacitors. Um, these do have numbers printed on them and they're kind of hard to see without like something to help you out here. But uh, what you can do and what I'm gonna do here is take a photo of them and then you can zoom in on the photo and that sometimes helps you see with the values. So other than that, it's kind of the same deal. So let's get started. So now I'm gonna do the polarized capacitors. So what direction you place these in the board actually does matter. There's a positive and negative side to each one. Um, so you just have to either look up or know um, how to place each different type of polarized capacitor. So I'm just gonna get started with these. Um, but for example, on these ones, we have the black line, which corresponds to the positive lead. Um, and on these, we have the positive leads, the longer one, and then the negative lead is the shorter one that has the, the stripe next to it. If you're doing these, just know that some capacitors are polarized and the direction you put them in does matter. All right, so let's do this. All right, time for some odds and ends.
All right, guys, so um, this is all built, the main board here. And according to the official instructions, my next steps here are to do the final assembly, but I got this active link option here. So I'm gonna build this board and then it'll be time for the final assembly. So let's get started. Oh, and I got this thing off Amazon in the mail today. So I'm gonna use this. I guess I can put a link in the description to this. Um, I'll let you guys know what I think of it. It seems pretty good so far. You can tighten it here, so it's pretty sturdy feeling. Um, let's see.
Now it's time for the final assembly.
okay, and that's it. Now it's all built. So now I just have to calibrate. So that's about it. I hope you guys really liked this video. So please let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you could do all the things that people on YouTube love, so like, comment, subscribe, share my videos, share my channel, um, watch my other videos, I would really appreciate it. And if you do want to support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. And my patrons do get access to additional content. So I think that's about it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you for watching. Okay. Never thought I'd miss my workbench this much. This one worked. This one's just being a little bitch. Just give a little leeway for the buttons, could ya? No. I think that might be my computer. Computer. I think so. Computer. 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 Mm -hmm.